This is the recently revised BMW X6, and it's a little bit like Snapchat. You see, when it first came out, people were like, oh my God, what is this terrible thing? But it's actually stood the test of time. And here we are. This is the third generation of X6 and the midlife facelift version. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about these recent updates that BMW have made to this car. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the fistable M door mirrors. Show you the interior. Ooh, the quality in here. Try out some of its technology. Ooh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm also gonna take it for a drive Parking is not complete, this is not a parking space. And see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. I'm going to talk you around the design of this car. So the first thing you need to know is that in the UK there are two trims available. There's M Sport or this even sportier M60i version which is like your M Light, And that has some slightly more sporty bits and pieces such as this little carbon fibre boot lip spoiler. However, the rear bumper design is the same regardless of which model you go for. And good old BMW, they don't do fake exhaust. They do slightly exaggerated exhaust. Look, so exaggerated surround, but look within, look within. The car I stick of truth reveals proper exhaustage. And it's the same over the other side as well. There we are, look. Thank God for that. That rear design is pretty much the same as it was before the facelift. It hasn't had a butt lift then. Moving down the side. We do have some new alloy wheel designs. They range from 20 inches to 21s. The M60i has slightly more aggressive side skirts, make it look sportier. And importantly, the fistable M door mirrors, finished in carbon fiber trim. Now in the past, the X6 used to be available with like silvery bits of trim, but now all versions just have black window surrounds and black trim on the front as well. This paint color is new. It's called, oh bugger, I've forgotten. Ami, Ami, Amitriptyline? No, that's a drug, isn't it? What is it? Amitrin. Amitrin. Apparently it's a quartz that is of this purpley color. Don't know why they didn't just call it aubergine that's the color it actually is. Anyway, Amatrin, whatever it's called, this is what that looks like. Moving to the front, we've got some slightly different light designs. And look, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Lots of condensation in the headlamps. I wouldn't be happy with that if I bought it. They've also slightly changed the look of the front end. So overall, the grille is the same as before, but like I said, you only get black surrounds now. Being the M light version, you have a grill that doesn't close, whereas on the M Sport, the grill does shut, so the slats are slightly different. Moving lower down, this M light version has a more aggressive lower front bumper, look with big air scoops, air breathers, and all that kind of stuff. This is what the M Sport looks like, but it is slightly different to the pre-facelift car, which looked like this. So it has had a facelift at least. And that brings me on to the price. Now let me just check on my phone. So if I go into CarWow, you'll see that the X6 starts from £75,000, rising to over £116,000 for this M60i. That you can save an average of over £7,000 on one through CarWow. So it is a rather expensive car. Too expensive, I think, to be doing that. £116,000 for that. Buying a new or used car? Then you need to visit CarWow and we'll help you find your perfect car at a price you'll love. Just answer a few simple questions about the car you want and our trusted dealers will come back to you with great offers. Then choose the offer that's right for you and contact the dealer directly through CarWow. No haggling, no fees, and on average, CarWow users save over £1,800. But what if you're not sure which car you actually want? No problem. Just watch our insightful video reviews, read our impartial expert advice, or use our helpful car buying tools to discover your ideal car in no time at all. No wonder 95% of customers surveyed said they wouldn't buy a car without CarWow. I've put a link in the description of this video and the pinned comment to take you directly to CarWow so you can see for yourself how it can help you or you can just click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing up there right now. Alternatively, just Google help me CarWow and my team and I will help you choose your perfect car and get it for a price your love. Now on with the video. There are a few key changes here on the inside of the X6 as part of the midlife facelift. So it's got a redesigned dash with new trims. Also the air vents are slightly different. Look, there's a reason for that. 
And that's because before you used to have your climate control buttons down here, but they're not there anymore. Because BMW has fitted its latest infotainment system with this huge curved widescreen display to the X6. And that means that the climate controls are now buried in here. So to operate the fan, you have to press this button here to bring up the fan speed. And then to go through all the different things of the climate control, you then have to press these buttons, which is all a little bit annoying. You've got your heated seat and heated steering wheel on there as well. See, and the good thing about the heated seat though, I'm not gonna criticize it for this, is it doesn't only heat the seat, it heats the armrest and the armrest in the door. Ooh, the quality in here, it's very nice. So as standard, the X6 gets vegan leather, which is a bit of an oxymoron, basically plastic seats, but they feel light leather. And generally the build quality is really nice. I think, look at this, solid as you like, this center console. I think BMW's interiors just feel a little bit posher than Audi's and quite a bit posher than Mercedes in terms of the material feel. Even all the way down here, it feels expensive here on the glove box, even to the door pockets. Soft, squidgy materials. Up here on the headliner, we've got Alcantara. And look, even the sun visors feel expensive. Mm, as does that. I like it. Let me tell you about this infotainment system because it is new and it does look good. That's not bad at all, nice and fast responses. There's lots of functionality and it can take a while to learn what's going on, but obviously you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Most of the time you're gonna be using those. The digital driver's display is pretty good as well with plenty of information. I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail on that later on in the video because there's quite a lot to tell you about it. Let's move on to storage spaces. So under here we have decent area with a USB-C. Moving forward, underneath here, we have two cup holders on this car, They're heated and cooled. You've got a wireless charging pad there, a 12 volt socket, and a normal USB. Now that brings me on to the door bins, which are rather large. So this is a big flask. It will fit in the cup holder, which is good, but it'll also fit in the door bin because you have a special flasky, big bottly area down here, as well as the extra door bin space. I need to tell you a couple of other things that have actually changed on this car. So if you look down here, there used to be a big knob, but they've replaced it with this gear selector. And as with other BMWs and the X6 in the past, you can upgrade to have this special crystal. I seem to have activated the infotainment system. You can control the infotainment system with this swivel wheel as well. Not that you're gonna to wanna to do that. It's a little bit too old fashioned. Yes, yeah, so you can upgrade the car to have these lovely crystal elements and it does just add a little bit of loveliness to the cabin, an extra bit of loveliness. Now let me move on to the seating position, which I think is pretty good in this car. So I've got fully electrical seats here. Oh yeah, so I can alter the lumbar support and stuff like that. I can, where is the button? There it is. I can extend my under thigh supportage. You're gonna to wanna to see this, look. Withdraw it, oh. Oh, I'm getting a bit shy. Oh, now I'm getting excited. And the steering wheel, which is also electrically operated. So you can find your ideal driving position, even if you're of an odd shape, such as me. I'm all kind of torso and short arms and legs. A bit like a Dachshund. Here in the back, despite that sloping roof line, there is enough headroom in this X6. Even people over six foot tall will be fine. There's also a decent amount of knee room. What's not so good though, is that you can't really stretch out underneath the seat in front. And part of the reason for that is, it's almost like the footwells have been filled in. You see, look, they're not that deep. As a result, even though this seat base here does extend a long way forward, you don't get that much under thigh support because the seat base is quite close to the actual floor. See what I mean, look at this. And you can't recline the seats either to get a little bit more like laid back, like you can in an Audi Q8. In fact, I think that car is better for carrying rear passengers. And if you wanna see my full in-depth video review on that car, click on the pop-out banner that should be appearing up in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Or if you're watching on smart TV, just click on the QR code using your phone's camera, all right? Another problem with this car is carrying three people in the back at once. So there is a bit of a hump in the floor, but it's not as huge as you might think because those footwells are a little bit filled in. 
But the centre seat is a little bit of a perch. It doesn't feel like a dedicated seat for an adult. A child will be okay. The problem is though, when you get three in the back of here at once, you're gonna push the two outer passengers closer to the doors and then this roof line curves in there. So taller people will then be brushing their head against that sloping roof line. And that's just a little bit annoying and a shame. Now, when it comes to carrying a child seat, it's actually pretty good. The doors do open wide enough and the Isofix anchor points are very easy to get to. You just flip at these covers and there's enough space back here to maneuver a seat into place and even carry one of those bulky rear facing seats. So that's good. In terms of practicality, look, we have some storage under here. We have some cup holders here. Just try it with the old flask. They fit. Will it fit in the door bin? Look, yeah, the door bin's nice and large here as well. Plus, you have airplane style pockets on the seat backs. And there's look, a little hole thing there where you can like hang a mount which can like hold an iPad and you've got your USB-C there. You have one on the other front seat. You've got your climate control here in the rear as well with, oh look, heated outer seats. And on the other side, like that. person in the middle can go freeze their bottom off. And then down here, there's another old fashioned 12 volta. One last thing to check. Go all the way down. Yes, it does, which is good. And look, you can get this shades, give you a bit of extra privacy in addition to the slightly tinted rear windows. Oh, and if you need to carry long items, so if you pull this down, pull this lever, that's your through loading there. Very good in some ways, but not ideal in others. Oh, forgot to show you this. Being the M light. Oh yeah just adds a little extra class to the back of this car. In fact, it feels just as luxurious and posh in the back as it does the front, with the ambient lighting here. And here, look, just illuminating my knees. One of the problems with these coupe style SUVs is that the sloping tailgate does limit the height of things that you can actually fit in the boot. Now, this particular car has a slightly smaller boot capacity than its key rivals anyhow. For instance, 580 litres of space in this BMW, whereas the Mercedes GLE Coupe has 655 litres. So, you do have a bit of a load lip there. Look, ooh, load lip. And because the boot is quite high, it does make it a bit of a pain for loading heavy items in and out. If you pay the extra, whoops, thousand, <laughs> or so pounds for the optional air suspension, you can then lower the tailgate, the boot, slightly by pressing a button, but this doesn't have it as standard. Now, what features do we have as standard? Tie down points, 12 volt socket, strappage, ooh, hookage, come on hookage, for hangage, more tie down points, and under here, oh, space. This feels like charging cables for a BMW i, which is bizarre because the X6 isn't available as a plug-in hybrid. Don't know why they're in there. Let's move on. I'm gonna fold those rear seats down and it seems like I should have some levers to pull on, but they're not there. So instead, now I can't reach in. Arms are too short, remember? Short arms, short legs. Daction boy. You have to do it here. Go to the other side without tripping over the pelly case. Now, once you do fold down the rear seats, you can see that they do lie pretty much completely flat. But when you want to put them back up again, you have to do it manually. And that brings you up to five or nine things about the BMW X6. In the days of yore, you used to be able to operate a BMW's disc control for the adaptive cruise control by pressing a button on the steering wheel, which is where you should be able to operate it from. But not now, because that functionality is buried in the infotainment system. So you're driving along cruise control, you want to go, oh, do you know what? I want to be a bit further distance from the car in front. You have to go into, where is it? Vehicle, uh, driver settings, uh, driver assistance, uh, driving distance control, preferred distance. There we go, yeah. Oh, I've crashed, that's a shame. Oh no, I haven't crashed because obviously the cruise control has kept me safe. But 
I've been messing around for far too long and my missus is very cross with me for being distracted in such a way. Oh, you think that's bad, right? I want to just change the light functionality. So I want to go to side lights for a second or I want to change that. No, I can't do it down here. I have to press a button on here, brings up lighting and then I can just mess around there with side lights or exterior lighting off or whatever, dip beam. What the f***? Because this car has a sloping rear screen, BMW don't bother to fit a windscreen wiper, assuming that the airflow will just remove all the water. Believe me, it doesn't happen. Look, I mean, obviously this is stationary, so it looks worse than it is, but when I was driving, it was just the same. And you can't see out the back window quite so well, and you sort of need to get out occasionally and wipe it yourself. Be your own windscreen wiper. Talking about wiping things, you need to wipe the rear view camera occasionally as well because, I mean, look at this one, it's just covered in crap. It just really affects the view out of the rear view camera, so you have to give it a bit of a yeah, wipe so you get a decent view. Oh my gosh, we must have a massive glove box behind here because look at the size of the door. Now, wait a minute. Not so much. There's this stuff here. What is this stuff? What is it? What is this stuff? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Scent cartridges. Actually looks like printer ink, doesn't it? Oh, wow. It's made me a little bit high. Certain car manufacturers have specifically asked that I don't mess about with their car's parcel shelves. So, Jack, can you illustrate a problem with the BMW's load cover? So, it's quite big and bulky, look. I quite like the way it folds up, but it is rather heavy, isn't it, Jack? The big issue, though, is you want to fill the car up with stuff. Where do you put your load cover without damaging it? So, what are you going to do, Jack? He's going to try and put it underneath the false floor. There's a lot of space in there, but it's just not quite the right shape to take the load cover. It's not quite there, is it? You might damage something if you put something heavy on top of there. You know what to do. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, I love this ambient lighting strip here on the dash. It does create quite a distraction when you're driving at night. Look, you know, you sort of pick it up in your peripheral vision. However, there is the option to enter a reduced light for driving at night. So that reduces. You can't see it so badly. It's still there a bit, but it's nowhere near as distracting. And that brings on to five cool things about this car. By pressing this button here, the driver can then control the front passenger seat using their own seat controls. Look, you can use it as a means of torture. Jack is six foot three inches tall. I need to make him smaller. How small a gap can we fit Jack into? Come on, Jack, you've been a very bad lad. Very bad. There we go. That'll learn him. You can control all the reading lights in the car from this menu in the entertainment screen. So if someone in the back has left the light on and got out, you can turn them off from here. Speaking of reading lights, they're reasonably bright, but for full brightness, you want to press that button. <laughs> oh, it's blinding. As well as ambient lighting throughout the interior cabin, you can also get it up here in the sunroof. Let me show you. I'll just turn it on now. Ooh. And as with the interior trim, which you can see here in the door and stuff, you can change the colour. I'll just cycle through some for you now. That one is called Pearl. I think you get the idea. The functionality of the digital driver's display is pretty awesome. So there's your standard dials. Go into sports mode and it's more sporty. But I can actually toggle through different views and stuff and what content is shown by using this button here. So then you just scroll down, get different types of content, with your maps and all that kind of stuff. And you can also configure the heads up display to show different information. It's quite big, the heads up display, you can have your Navi in there and all that kind of stuff. But one particular thing that I really love is this feature here. It's called augmented reality. And so you have a light camera feed from the camera on the front. And it can then superimpose directions onto the satellite navigation for you there. So you're driving along, you see a junction, and it'll show an arrow of which way you have to turn at that junction, it's brilliant. But I found another useful way you can benefit from this feature. So when you're driving along at night down a narrow lane, and the, 
there's a car coming the other way, the lights are kind of glaring, you don't know where the size of your car are, you're just plain guessing. You can look down at that and it allows you to see better without any glare, so you can figure out exactly where the size of the cars are. So it's less driving by just guesswork in those kind of situations. Really, really useful, really, really good driver's display. You know how for a while BMW has been playing fake engine noises through the car's speakers to enhance the whole experience. Well, they've named it Iconic Sounds now, but the good thing is, is that you can press this button and turn that feature off. Reduced drive sound, well, well reduce it, you can't turn it off completely, but you can make it less noticeable, so it's more authentic. Let me tell you about the engine choices on the X6. So it's very simple. They're all internal combustion engines, no EV, no hybrid. You've got a three litre straight six turbo petrol, 380 horsepower, a three litre turbocharged diesel with 298 horsepower. Then there's this glorious thing. It's a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 with 530 horsepower. Interestingly, the pre facelift version of this car was called the M50i, but now it's called the M60i, which means it's got more power. It's not. It's got the same, same power. The 50 had the same 530 horsepower. They just made the number bigger so they can ask more money for it. Bravo BMW. Anyway, that brings on to which version of the X6 should you go for? Well, I have configured my perfect BMW X6 using the CarWire configurator. If you want to find out what that is, just click on the pop-out banner appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Let's go driving. Starting off within town. So sitting up reasonably high, you have a good view over the traffic. The view through that part isn't so great. Also, what's not great, thick A pillars create a massive blind spot. Worse still though, if you're at the back window, it's quite small. And you've got some massive pillars there at the back, which really do obscure your view when you're like looking over your shoulder to pull out at certain junctions. Now, in terms of the drive, steering's nice and light for in town. The brakes are strong, yet progressive, so they're not grabby. You don't end up like head banging as you're just shunting along in traffic. The automatic gearbox is super smooth. You don't even realize that it has been changing gears. It's just so lovely. And to what's also good, the maneuverability. So the turning circle, is 12.6 meters, which is better than an Audi Q8, which is over 13 meters. However, because this car has the rear axle steering, it's 12 meters. Look at this, right? I can easily do a UE here. To help me out though, I'm gonna use that clever camera system. So I'm gonna pop that up. There we go, let's go for, no, I don't want that view. Let's go for a different view. Let's go for 3D view. That'll really help, look. Because I wanna make sure I don't curb my alloys on the curb in front. I can see how close I'm getting. Am I gonna make it round? Yeah, look, that is so, 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 so helpful. Look at the space I've got now over this side of the curb. That is really impressive. Ho, ho, ho. I'll tell you what's also impressive, the suspension. So it does have a slightly firmish, sporty edge to it, but it's not uncomfortable. And you've got adaptive dampers, which have a really nice comfort mode. It still feels firm and sporty, but it's got a level of sophistication to it, which is just really, really, really nice. Now you might be wondering what all that beeping and bonging is. It's because this car has the special parking system. So it constantly looks for parking bays. So it's looking for parking bays that are like nose in bay parking. It's also looking for parallel parking on both sides of the road. And it can figure out whether you should go in forwards, backwards or what have you. But is it any good? Well, I'm gonna try it out now. Let's find out. So parking view, there we are. It's looking as I'm driving along, looking for parking spaces. There we go. Start parking forward. No, I don't. I want to go in there. In that gap I just went past. No, it wants to park me over there. I know why it wants to park over there. It's actually a better space. So it's going to use this gap that I wanted to parallel park into to park there. You could probably see it would fit in here. But let's see what it does to get me into that space just there. Wait a minute. This is going horribly wrong. It's now just parking me across these other cars. What are you doing, BMW? Why do you want me to park there? Parking is not complete, this is not a parking space. Right, this is not ideal, I'm gonna give it another go. Let's see if we can actually find a parking space that it can park in. That was definitely a parking space. The parallel parking was where I wanted to park. And it's constantly looking for parking spaces. 
This is a parking space here to the left. Look there, look. Here is a clear parking space. Here, look, it's massive. There can be no reason for it not spotting this or the one next to it. Why doesn't it want any of these? There we go, it's found it, it's found it, it's found it finally. Work now. Don't curve the wheels. I've got a horrible feeling it's gonna park into the building. Okay, it finally did it in a massive parking space. Let's leave the parking space. Yes, leave that way. I do think it has parked me over the curb though. Let me just cancel that. I just want to check whether it has parked me over the curb. Come and have a look at this. It's parked me on the curb. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to show you something else. Okay. Right, oh no, I've come this way and like this person's just here. Oh no, no, don't worry, I'll go backwards because I've got my reversing assistant. Please allow me. So it's basically remembered my last input for the steering wheel and it's gonna play what I did in reverse. So now I'm gonna go backwards. So I control the brake and the accelerator and now it's taking me out of here. Though you can tell we're in like the countryside because everyone's so polite with both reversing there's a car passing behind me, so I was able to just brake there and control it. But look, it's taking me out of there. In fact, if I want to, I can pretty much do the whole route that I just did backwards, but I've now got a car coming here behind me. He's not going to be happy. There we are. So now I'm going to cancel it, do it again, show you in another situation. So now it's remembering it again. Look, oh, I'm going to drive down here. Oh, I don't want to go this way anymore. Once again, Let's get into that reversing assistant, go into reverse, and it'll take me out of here and just accelerate. Control the throttle, and it'll do all the steering. And I know I've got in here safely, although I did, I think, just brush something. So I should brush it again on the way out. But this just makes it so much easier. There we go. <laughs> it's replaying my tracks totally in reverse. Super easy. And this should get me out of here. And it would take me all the way around, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go this way. That's an easy parking space. That's where you want to get in. Did it spot it? That's a negative. All right, let's just go backwards, see if it spots it. Hello? 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 Try again forward. Do you know what? And this is the problem. You end up fapping around so much trying to get the system to work. It's just quicker to do it yourself. Because if you do it too slowly, some other person, like that guy there in that Subaru, will be in the empty parking space before all your tech has had time to figure out what the heck's going on. I think we can agree that reversing assistant is brilliant, but the parking assistant needs a little bit of work. What? You're telling me there's a parking space? Well, you're telling me about the parking space I've just parked in? Well, now you're telling me about that parking space because I've just parked in it, you blooming idiot. Oh, oh, you're tidying me up, are you? Making it a little bit neater. The cheeky bugger. Well, let's just see how blooming neat it is. Right, let's have a look at it. Oh. To be fair, it did actually tidy up my parking. I guess that's something. Now we're coming to a faster stretch of road. I want to see what the pickup is like from 40 miles an hour when you say you need to accelerate down a ramp onto the motorway. So here we go. We're at 40 miles an hour. Three, two, one. Bit of a wait for kick down, but now it has done. Wow, this V8 absolutely flies. Had to get on the brake pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, what an immense engine this is. Sounded good as well. I've turned off the fake noises. Speaking of noises, a little bit of wind noise from ever, like ever so slightly, like really well insulated. And not much road noise either, or suspension noise. And this car is just barely ticking over at 70 miles an hour. It's freaking insane. Let me just show you the actual revs, two and a half. 60, it's doing like 2,000 RPM. You can tell this is set up for the autobahn. It could happily sit at 70, and it's like it's barely even trying. You know, it'll happily sit at 155 miles an hour on the autobahn as well. Barely even trying. 
impressive and it feels just so stable at speed. There's something else that's impressive, well, depending on which way you look at it. So the claimed economy for this V8, 24.7 miles to the gallon. I've actually been averaging 24.9, almost 25 MPG for a car that's this big with this level of performance. It's incredible. I'm gonna stick in sports mode down here and check out the handling. So how do I get into manual mode for the gearbox? I can't remember. Surely there's a way to do it. What are you doing? How do I do it? There we go, got it, finally. I had to double pull on the paddle. Right, here we go. Whoa! <laughs> Good thing is, look, it lets you hold on to gears. See, it won't auto shift up. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Audi. Here shifts are pretty good from this eight speed. Nice and fast, it's responsive in sports mode and manual mode. We've got some added weight to the steering. The throttle response is snappier than in comfort. There's less comfort in the suspension now though. And what you can do is mix and match the sport settings so you can actually have comfort suspension with the rest of the car in sporty mode. And that is what I would have because here on this twisty road, it's a little bit bumpy and it's sort of unsettling the car a bit and unsettling my bottom. So let's do this in sport. Whoop, don't go off the road. Watson, sport individual. I've set that up. Got comfort and suspension in this sport individual mode and already it's way better, more composed, and I'm not really noticing that much more lean through the bends. I think this is the setting really, for the UK at least. But wow, yeah, it does handle really well. The steering's responsive, it's quick. The thing feels agile for such a big, tall car. Very impressive the way this handles. Now, if you'd like another sporty SUV, put a link to one that I've reviewed. Just click on the pop-out banner up there to watch it. Overall though, this car does drive very well. I mean, you've got so much grip from the four-wheel drive system. It's rear drive biased as well, so you feel like you've been pushed out the corners. Plus this M version, well, M light, has a rear limited slip differential, which improves corner exiting traction even further. I reckon on a track, I could drift this a little bit. It feels that playful. BMW is very good at this kind of thing. Look at it, just gripping through there. Whoa, hauling ass. Wow. Literally almost like jumped into the back of that camera car in front. It is totally insane. There's only one more thing for me to do, and that's to time how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. BMW says this M60i should go from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. So I'm going to time it with my specialist timing gear. And today's conditions are quite challenging, but let's see what we can do. Left foot on the brake. Floor the throttle, launch control active. I can't believe how well that hooked up. That is quick as basically. Quick as BMW, the blooming liars! The lying, 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 lying buggers. Nord 60 took 3.87 seconds. On a crappily surfaced, wet, damp, cold, miserable road. Rocket ship, absolute rocket ship. So then, what's my final verdict on the revised BMW X6? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the X6. It really is a very, very good car. The only problem is, is that an X5 is just better to get that instead. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It really helps us out. And let me know what you think of my verdict on this car in the comments below. If you click on the video windows, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on the CarWow logo, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.